Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new around here, welcome. My name is Divyanka and I'm a doctor of pharmacy here in the US. On this channel, I strive to provide you guys with resources to build your ideal professional life. Now on this channel, I am of course a pharmacist and I talk a lot about all the different career paths you can pursue as a PharmD graduate, which there are so many different paths and so many different career options that we have as PharmDs, which is absolutely fantastic. But it's also actually harder in a way because then you don't know what path to go down, how to choose what's right for you, and it can honestly get very confusing. I'm definitely speaking from experience. I definitely definitely didn't know about all the different career paths when I first started pharmacy school, but as I was looking to gain the correct experience, I realized there's just an abundance of options. And there's almost not enough time to see and experiment and really figure out what's right for you. But even though this is super, super challenging, and again, I definitely went through this myself, there are some things that you can ask yourself and opportunities you can give yourself to help you make that decision. So in today's video, I'm going to go over how to choose the right career path as a pharmacist. This is definitely just going to touch the top of it. We can go into much more detail into each of the topics that I'll be going into, and the list can be a lot longer. So there might be a part two, a part three to this video, but I think this is a great place to start, especially if you don't really know where to start. Hopefully these tips in this video will really help you. My first piece of advice is to really try to get as many experiences as possible. It's the reality of life. You don't know what you don't know. And although you could read about it on the internet, you could research it, you're honestly not gonna know anything about it to the extent that you need to, unless you have some sort of experience. So at least within pharmacy school, we have six to eight years to really get our foot in the right place. So utilize that time, make intentional decisions about what types of experiences you're going after, you're applying, to, you're spending your time in, because there's just so much you can do. So if you can start early and be intentional about getting a variety of different experiences, then you're definitely going to help yourself in making that decision and also, of course, opening more opportunities up for yourself. The landscape of pharmacy and pharmacy jobs is definitely changing. Pharmacy used to be seen as just a brick and mortar, counting pills type of job, but that is really transformed into so many different things. And so honestly, you might actually get into something that a lot of people aren't even doing as pharmacists. That's just the nature of the industry right now, which is awesome, but you can only take advantage of that if you again start early and intentionally look for those things. If you don't like something, you're not tied to it, you're not married to it, you're just doing it for a semester or for a summer, and it has an end. You don't have to spend your career exploring. You can really use your time in pharmacy school to do that. So definitely, definitely make use of that. That is my biggest piece of advice. If that's one thing you take away from this, just try to get your foot in the door in a million different places and watch where that takes you. You're gonna end up somewhere where you had no idea a pharmacist could even work and you're gonna love it. And that's what I love about the opportunities that are present to pharmacists today. So again, I just want you guys to make use of that. Even though I got a pharmaceutical industry internship my third year summer, I still honestly felt like that was so late. So you can start way earlier in the game and pharma is just one sector of what you can do. I have so many different friends doing so many different things in pharmacy and they love it. And honestly, a lot of those things are things that I never even got to experiment with. So again, utilize this time to really help yourself open up to opportunities. My next piece of advice is to talk to people. I feel like I have said this in actually probably the last four or five videos, but this is literally the piece of advice that if you act upon diligently and persistently, it'll actually bring you so, so much. And you can only know that once you experience it. Once you get over the fear of reaching out to random people and starting these random conversations, once it's fruitful for you, which it'll be probably after four or five conversations, you'll see how much value it brings and all that other fear or awkwardness kind of goes away. So just put yourself out there, talk to people, 
talk to different people in different industries within pharmacy, people who are doing all these different things with their careers, talk to each and every single person that you can. You're going to get insight that you could never get anywhere else. You're going to get the daily life version of what that job is. And that's really important. Talking to people is that middle ground between doing your research on the internet and getting experience. It's the next best thing after getting experience. And of course, you can't necessarily get experience in all 50 different types of pharmaceutical jobs. It's just not possible. So talking to people and using that to streamline, okay, this seems interesting to me. Let me shortlist it in something that I could try to get into as an intern or as a volunteer or something like that. Talking to people also brings mentors into your life and that is very important. You will naturally click with some people that you talk to and those people will really help you flourish in your career, flourish in your pharmacy school career and help you decide where it is you want to put your time into and what career might be best for you. So bottom line, talk to as many people as you can, students, alumni, professionals with years of experience, everyone. Do yourself this service and talk to as many people as you can. My next piece of advice is that in deciding what career path you want to go down for pharmacy, you actually really have to nail down what you want your lifestyle to be like. What do you envision for your future? What kind of life do you want to live? And I say this because the type of role and the type of job that you go after is heavily dependent on this. And if you haven't thought about this and you don't know what that future looks like for you or at least a few ideal options, it's going to be extremely hard for you to pinpoint what you want to do. For example, both of my parents are software engineers and they have always talked about how great it is that they can always work from anywhere. They're not tied necessarily to certain times. They can have a more flexible life and I don't know if that's what really influenced me but when I saw that you know retail pharmacy or clinical pharmacy has shifts that's something that I kind of didn't see in my future. I nailed down that I wanted a more flexible lifestyle and once I saw that the pharmaceutical industry and roles within could actually cater to that I was attracted to the pharmaceutical industry a little more and that's what I mean by figuring out what kind of lifestyle you want. At the end of the day we all have to work a certain amount of hours a day in our our lives that's inevitable but there are some options that can help you build the life that you actually want to live so decide how that looks for you and then understand which career paths of pharmacy actually fit in to that ideal life my next piece of advice is to really understand the industry of pharmacy now I mean this from a both global and very minute scale globally you need to understand where pharmacy fits into the healthcare picture what's wrong with the industry, what's going right in the industry, what trends are people talking about right now, which players play what part, all of those things. Those are all important things that no matter where you are, what you work in, you need to know. But also, you need to know the specifics as well. So once you do figure out two to five different career paths that you could potentially go down, do your research, talk to people, and get to know those specific industries extremely well. If you don't do this, you're actually going to be naturally turned off to any of the industries that you pick because you're going to feel alienated and you're going to feel like you don't actually know anything and you can't envision yourself in that. You have to force yourself in that and see if it is the right fit. And again, you don't necessarily have to decide this, but you do have to put the effort into understanding what these different industries are like, why they exist, what happens in each industry, etc. And again, I mean the sub industries. Clinical pharmacists at a hospital play a very different role than someone who's a long-term care pharmacist or an infusion pharmacist or an industry pharmacist or a retail pharmacist or someone who works at the FDA. So again, you need to understand what those perspectives are and try to get in front of all that information as soon as you can. The more you do this, the better it is for you the more you're going to understand it and honestly the more opportunities are going to come your way because you're probably going to exude that knowledge others will see that and you'll naturally be kind of magnetized towards an industry so do your homework do your research know your stuff 
My last piece of advice is definitely more general, but you have to know and keep updated on industry trends. Now this can be as simple as subscribing to one or two pharmacy specific or pharmaceutical or healthcare newsletters and reading them on a daily or weekly basis. Something to keep you current because our healthcare landscape is changing like crazy. Every single day there is something new and no matter where you work as a pharmacist, that knowledge is going to help you. If you can tie the current trends, the current healthcare knowledge, into whichever career path of pharmacy you choose, it'll be so beneficial to you. You'll do so much better in interviews. People will like you a lot more. You will come across as knowledgeable. It'll help you in the actual role to succeed in that role and to bring that company or to bring that hospital or clinic further. It's only going to help you and you're going to have to do this at some point. Pharmacists and doctors do this all the time. They are always reading up on the latest literature, the latest papers, the latest news. And honestly, again, no matter what career path you choose, at some point in your career, you're going to realize you have to start reading that stuff, stay updated on that stuff. So you might as well start early. Again, this is something that I took very lightly. I didn't do for the longest time. And now doing it in hindsight, it definitely Definitely could have helped me in so many situations. Being current is super important. You guys know what's going on on social media currently, you know what's going on on the internet. So the same thing, you need to be very knowledgeable about what's happening currently in your own industry. Those were my five pieces of advice in helping you decide what career path within pharmacy is right for you. Now again, this is just a starting point, but it is a great starting point, and I know that from experience. Some of these things people used to tell me all the time, and I just never did, and once I did it, I realized, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm still a student, but I could have done this so much earlier, and it would have helped me probably be in maybe even a better place, who knows? So it can only help you, Really try to internalize this advice because I didn't. And I hope this does make your soul searching path within pharmacy a little easier. If you guys liked this video, thought it was helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you have not already for more helpful videos like this. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this will probably have many parts to it. So definitely stay tuned. But that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and sticking around. And as always, you guys will see me in the next video. Mm -hmm.